And welcome back, everyone, and thank you for listening to us all day. Uh, this is our last session, as Julie was saying, and it's the last session before the event when we head out into breakout chat rooms about five o'clock. We call this session Launch City because guess what? This is where we will be talking about new launches relevant to the topics we've already discussed today. Each of our speakers will have 15 minutes to talk, and then we will allow about 10 minutes Q&A at the end of all three sessions. So we will take the questions at the end of all three speakers finishing their talks. And if I could ask each speaker to please anchor back to me when they're finished, that will give me uh, time and uh, give me notice to start with the next speaker. And I will prompt our speakers if they're running over their 15 minute slots, um, if it, we don't want to be running very late because it's been a long day for everyone. We appreciate your presence. Um, first up, uh, our speaker, first speaker is Tony Burden of Make My Money Matter. The, the campaign aims to shift UK pensions into sustainable investments ahead of COP26 in Glasgow in 2021. The campaign was launched by Richard Curtis, the co-founder of Comic Relief and a film writer and director. He's well known for his works such as Notting Hill and Four Weddings and a Funeral. Tony, over to you. Great, thanks Ebru and thanks everyone. It's good to, good to meet you. Um, so yeah, quick introduction to Make My Money Matter and I'll, I'll talk about some of the things we're trying to push. So yes, co-founded by Richard Curtis, I think he felt after uh, his work with comic relief um, and campaigning on make poverty history, he, he really came to a realization that, that savings and investments were, were much more powerful uh, than, than charity or, or aid and, and wanted to focus on, on that. So he helped launch Make My Money Matter. And our, our purpose is to help give people more voice and control over their savings and investments and to help shift that finance into sustainable investment and to stop it driving the climate and environment emergency. Um, and survey after survey shows that the majority of people want their savings to do good. And people also say they'll save more if they know it does good. And we're seeing a major shift across the society as more and more people, in particular a younger generation, are making choices around the food they eat, the clothes they wear, how they travel. And I think the next big thing will be around how their money is saved and invested. And, and we've started on pensions. Um, and our strategy is threefold. First, to mobilise pension savers to ask their pension provider or their employer where their pension is invested, what its impact is, and whether their default fund can be more sustainable. Secondly, to ask employers, businesses and others to join us as partners and seek to make their staff scheme more sustainable. And finally, to work with government, regulators and industry to seek the changes needed. And we're asking for five things. Um, for pension funds to align their portfolios to net zero emissions by 2050, with a halving by 2030, to grow the portion of portfolio invested for impact, um, and then to mainstream ESG across the entire portfolio, to be more active shareholders of the companies they invest in, and finally for pension funds to engage with their members and to respond where appropriate to their values and interests while noting that they're not investment experts and you know, it's, it's not for members to direct how the pension fund is invested. So it's clear that the climate and environment emergency creates huge risks to future returns in pension funds. And you, you'll all have seen that from the write downs of BP's assets to Swiss Re just last week reporting that a fifth of countries are at risk of ecosystem collapse. On the other hand, I think we've seen consistent evidence that ESG funds outperform the market. And there's opportunity too. Mark Carney says that the commercial opportunity from investing in sustainable businesses in the long term is the biggest in living memory. So I think we've got to a place where, you know, it's not anymore about values versus value. It's about both. We've been running a net zero hero campaign uh, in the past months. Um, and we've seen Nest, Aviva, South Yorkshire Pension Fund, the BT Pension Scheme, all commit to net zero. And we're talking to more pension funds who plan to do the same. So, so far since we've launched the campaign, that's over 11 million pension pots that will now be aligned to net zero 
over 100 billion in assets under management. But it's clearly not enough. There's almost 3 billion invested through UK pensions. So let me just show um, a video um, that sort of shows how we're engaging um, with the public. Great. So, you know, you can see we, um, you know, are looking at all sorts of ways to try and get people to engage with their pensions. Um, and probably pensions, are, they may be one of the most boring things and very complicated things and, and to many people, very worrying things. So um, that's part of our approach to engaging, engaging the public. And we're getting, you know, lots of engagement and support. So, you know, from Gary Lineker, retweeting to 8 million followers uh, about pensions, to Guy Opperman supporting us in, in the Daily Telegraph. Chris Hemsworth recently just introduced a, a naked Martin Freeman narrating uh, on the Woolly Man at TEDx Countdown. And um, so a colleague was on a podcast called Guilty Feminist, along with Emma Howard Boyd, who's um, from the Environment Agency. And a woman wrote in that while she listened to that podcast, she shifted her pensions. Um, we've had nearly a million views of our videos and members of pension funds are writing to their trustees at Aviva, Legal and General, um, and employees are gauging uh, with their companies and asking for a more sustainable pension. We'll be doing other campaigns as well. It's, it's not all about climate change. Um, the impact of pensions on nature, for instance. So I don't know if you've seen David Attenborough's new movie, a sort of testament to his life that that maps out his life from when he was very young to now and just looking at mankind's impact on nature and in that film he says it's crazy that our pensions our banks are investing in fossil fuel when these are the very things that jeopardize the future that we're saving for so we'll, we'll do some work with others uh, world wildlife fund is one of our, our core partners um, and look at how we make the links between pension fund investment and impact on nature. But we'll also look at areas like fast fashion or the food industry, all, all ways really that help people understand that their pension is actually invested and those investments have an impact. And those impacts can be good and they can also be bad. Um, and there are things that we can do about that. I do think we're at a tipping point. The industry is responding but the industry will need to respond further and quicker. That's from pension funds to financial advisors. I think the demand for pensions that align with people's values, that meet society's challenges, and that focus on solutions will only grow. So thanks. Um, I'll hand over to you, Ebru, uh, and I look forward to the discussion after this.